these letters do not attach to the next letter and so are one ended uh, for example you see rijlun or rasun here you see the ra does not attach to the uh, jim which is next to it but you see the jim attaches to the lam so this is one ended letter huh? so similarly here rasun uh, which means head uh, the ra uh, does not attach to the alif and the alif also does not attach to the sin so there is spaces between them so these kind of letters, uh, according to their shape or their structure, they have a one-ended meaning. So this means uh, like uh, say one end is attached to something and then the other end is free. You will notice this, for example, you see a leg, a, a leg or a head is attached to one end and the other end is free. And we will see this uh, uh, structure uh, in many, many words that have this uh, uh, letter Ra, Alif, Dal, Dal, Raza, you know, these six letters. Huh? Okay. And then another issue is that Ra is associated with curvature, which we have seen in our previous uh, uh, videos as well, that Ra is attached with the curvature. See, if you, uh, if, if one end is attached at the center of a circle and the other end is free and you, uh, you put a ra-like motion, it is always, always going to uh, make a curve. Okay, so see, let's see a few words first, uh, ra-sun and rijlun. You, you will notice how intelligent uh, the uh, divine language actually is. First of all, see the uh, rijlun is, is uh, easier to understand. So it's a, it's a ra-like structure, uh, it's saying, and jim is dot is below, and you see the ha, uh, like uh, shape of the feet <clears throat> and then the lamb is lengthwise so it's saying it's a it's a ra like a structure which attaches to the ground lengthwise huh? so very interesting meaning huh? and notice here it's rijlun uh, there is a kasra uh, which is indicating that it is something below right and then rasun you can see that it is uh, in it is with a fatha so it is indicating something above which is the in case of the head and notice how the ra is uh, denoting things that are at the extreme end of the body such as the head or the leg so uh, here the ra, in the rasun uh, there is a couple of interesting things first of all uh, the ra is showing it's a ra structure it's one end that's one free and then the alif is showing at the the with the hamza is showing at the top uh, part of the body and then the scene uh, is uh, for several purposes first of all the three-dimensional movement scene has three teeth so it has a three-dimensional uh, movement signifying sara you know going somewhere and then uh, the scene is also associated with power uh, like uh, siphon, sikkin, you know, power to rule over people. So rasa would means to be the, uh, you know, rise would means the head uh, of an organization. Similarly, ziraun uh, means uh, an arm. So here, see, ira, and the uh, here, the ra is the second letter. And so it's not certain that uh, it's a uh, uh, upper or lower, but, uh, you know, the zira, there is a kasra here with the alif so that's one indication and then ayn is uh, indicating Allah or the above huh? Allah or above so ziraun is indicating a, an arm um, on the upper side but it's a right structure first of all and and why za because uh, it's in the middle of the body so you you'll notice that zailun tail or zakar uh, penis or uzunun these are all uh, carrying the word za uh, which is also one ended and uh, it's indicating that's in the middle part of the body, such as uh, the hand. But see, the leg is at the end of the body. It's very, very intelligent, uh, the uh, uh, divine language. is far more intelligent than even you can imagine. All right, so we will see a few letters, such as you see, Rajila means to go on foot. The word Rijlun is from Rajila, right? So Ra, we know Raha, 
uh, or, or going somewhere, right? To go somewhere. And then Rajila would means to go on foot because of this dot below, which is indicating um, the uh, contact with the ground. And Ha is Harakat, you know, the Harakat uh, movement and uh, stepwise, right? Uh, unit uh, movement signifying by the lamb. Okay. And then notice Rajul uh, in plural Rijalun, men, and man is Rajul. Uh, here, uh, the Ra is signifying Ra'sun, the head, and Jim Lam, Jim is uh, feminine, and Lam is the, to cling with the female. So, Jim Lam is indicating the female part, and then the Ra is indicating the, uh, which is, the, so Jim is worked upon, see, so a female is worked upon by the Ra'sun or the head of the family. So, men in here is not uh, in the sense of the male, uh, which would be Zakar but uh, in the sense of the head of the family or rice uh, right so so he is uh, man enough you know like that kind of sense and uh, the rajul is used okay so see rajila uh, is related to this rahala yarhalu means to set out to to go out somewhere uh, to go out somewhere and uh, interestingly ra is uh, indicating a certain measure you know, to go somewhere and and high harakat and unit propagation and and if it is going on foot uh, the dot below is indicating also slower pace uh, of the going so rajila would mean uh, to go on foot which is indicated both by the dot and the uh, kasra uh, below the gym okay so it's very interesting that I have already told you that this uh, single dots always indicate uh, an opposite meaning. For example, Rahala uh, would mean to go in the forward direction. And Zahala, which is a dot, Ra, Za, you know, would also mean, Za would also mean to go somewhere, but uh, going in uh, some in unusual way or the opposite way of uh, going, say, in the forward direction. So Rahala uh, would mean to go in the forward direction to set out. But Zahala would means to withdraw, to go in a backward direction, right? And then both of these together, you can see in this word, Zara. Zara, where you can see Za means Zahala and Ra uh, is, uh, uh, you know, come back uh, after uh, meeting another person or, or doing something inactive and then uh, after setting to go somewhere. So you come back after going somewhere, Zahala and Rahala is uh, both together in this word Zara, which means to visit. And then Yazuru, you see it, it's from the root Zawara. So Yazuru is while you are going, right? It is the uh, present tense marker. We have seen this before, that Y is the present tense marker and Alif is the past tense marker, right? And uh, yeah, Zur to go, right? This uh, this is, uh, you you are, see the, the Y and Alif is indicating a person who is doing the action, right? But Zur, uh, you are ordering somebody else to go. That's why both Y and Alif is absent, right? So Yazuru means you went somewhere, right? He went, uh, the person who is doing the work, but here his order is being uh, given, Zur, to go somewhere. That's why uh, the Y or Alif both are missing. Okay. Uh, we see another word here uh, from this root, Khayara Ikhtara. Ikhtara means to choose, and Ikhtiar or Khiar means choice, right? Yakhtaru means uh, he is choosing, and Ikhtara means he uh, chose in the past tense. So Ikhtar means to uh, choose, choose as in a command, right? And and here the file and maful is both Mukhtar and Mukhtar, both of them, both of them same. There is no change. This is actually a type uh, eight verb from the root Khayara. So choice, huh? So how does this uh, make a choice? So see, here you can see Kha is Khuz, to take, and Ya is uh, two things, and Ra is one way. So you take uh, between two things, you choose one. See how nice it is. But in this, um, in this is although this is simple, but uh, uh, the ikhtar, why the uh, type 8 verb is that uh, you, this, this is indicating, the, first of all, the uh, kasra below the alif, which is the additional letter, right? Uh, and uh, this kasra uh, uh, with the alif is indicating an, a condition. So alif is for a person, we know this. And then the kasra is indicating a condition. And then the ta, uh, in between uh, the the first and the second root letter is indicating uh, 
several things. First of all, uh, one is the choice between two things, right? But another thing is a previous engagement. You see, like, uh, you know, file ta, file t, you see ta is used uh, in the last word for a uh, previous uh, uh, engagement, right? So it's uh, actually you are choosing it based on a, something that has happened uh, previously, right? Yeah, so it's like a known thing that you are um, given a choice and you're taking based on your say, previous knowledge. It's very, very intelligent as I keep telling you and you can understand each of these uh, letters uh, very easily if you go like this. Okay, so I have told you that if you, if the Ra, you see Ra uh, makes a circle. Uh, we have seen this in several videos how the Ra is associated with the circle. And you see if you just rotate your hand or your leg, you'll see it moves in a circle because it's one end is fixed and the other end is uh, when you move it, it will always produce a uh, circular motion. And uh, you see here I'm showing that the, uh, the head like Ra-Sun or say Ziraun or the Rijlun, they are attached to one end and the other end is free. It will always like this kind of structure, you know, Ra-Sun, the head is attached here and then the free on the other side, right? And then the hand or the leg is similarly. And remember the Ziraun is uh, the za is used which is also a one-ended letter za except for several reasons actually this za is used first of all it is indicating that uh, this uh, structure the hand uh, human hand is attached uh, like in the middle of the body not at the end of the body that's that's one thing and another issue is it's on the outside of the body so several things you can understand from this for example say xylun tail or, or penis zakar or say uzunun here all of this are in the middle of the body and on the outside of the body if things were inside in the body uh, the dal would be used for example damun which is blood or dimag uh, which is uh, uh, brain they are inside uh, the body yeah? or say dahala he entered huh? uh, inside and zahaba he went out huh? see it makes sense that za is always uh, associated with something outside and dal is inside in addition to indicating that it is uh, attached to the uh, middle part of the body and if it is on the inside of the body it would be ra ra sun rijlun okay now we will see how we can understand a few of the verbs by using this uh, new meaning that you have learned uh, for example rafa yarfau it means to lift something, uh, to lift or to raise, uh, to lift or to raise, Rafa. Uh, the ra, we know the hand, and Fa is an object, and Ain is for Allah, above. Uh. So with the hand, you uh, take an object, uh, you know, so for, so for example, the Fa has the object shape, it looks like a ball, you can see, and you raise it up, Allah, huh? you raise it up. So uh, that's what is meant by uh, to lift. Uh. Rama means uh, to throw. Rama Yarmi. Uh, so Rama means he threw, and Yarmi means he is throwing. And Irmi throw, as in a command, right? Uh, so see here you have to be careful uh, because this uh, Ra Mim Ya. This is the root huh, for the word Rama. Rama Yarmi, and the Ya you can see here uh, in the present tense. Huh? But in the Irmi. Uh, this uh, red letter is absent. You can see you have to be careful when you are giving a command that uh, the eye is absent. All right. So Ram Yun uh, means throwing and Ram in. See here also the uh, uh, yeah goes away, missing, because these are the weak letters. And Maryun, Marmiyun means uh, thrown, right? Okay. So this is, this is, uh, these things, uh, when there is this uh, uh, yeah, uh, Ali for wow in this these are called like with the weak letters and uh, they have particular kind of uh, way uh, that the conjugation is done so always remember I, I'm giving you all the six uh, uh, six forms of the I main three the verbs and three in the nouns or ism three ism which is uh, the the fell uh, the uh, uh, file and mafula uh, so I'm giving you the uh, uh, yeah, file maful and then the masdar also, right? The, this is the masdar, ram, yun, raf, yun. Okay, so th this way you should learn these six forms. Always please learn the six forms when you learn these verbs. This will help you uh, in learning the Arabic language very quickly. All right, so similarly, 
you can see uh, two more verbs I'm showing you how to understand. Razia means to agree or to be satisfied. And Yarza means uh, to, uh, he's, uh, he, Yarza means he is agreeing. Huh? Here, notice uh, there is this, uh, this uh, the, there is a kasra, right? And uh, Irza, here the, ir, not Irzi, but Irza to agree. Huh? And this one is satisfaction. This can be in you know, several uh, ways can be put. But here you see the interesting thing is the root is not ra, dwad and ya, but ra, dwad wa. This is the root huh? from this root. And, and this root you can see in the masdar. In the masdar the rizwan, the wa uh, comes. Huh? And ra is in is the, who is uh, agree at the person who is agreeing. And marziun means agreed, right? Okay, so how, how does it uh, become agree? So see this, the hand, the ra uh, is the hand, and then dua this to add, to add a two, right? So two person uh, shaking hands. Th that is the picture here. So ra, you know, we know uh, it uh, can be a hand-like structure, right? So a ra uh, added of two persons, huh? Okay, so yeah, then that this is agree. And you see the dot can only be seen uh, in in the uh, when the verb is complete right before you you could not see because uh, he was uh, not, uh, you know he did not uh, you agree you know then you decide something right and then uh, you agree so uh, when uh, the action was ongoing it was not fully completed yet uh, the ia uh, dot of the ia uh, cannot be seen huh? okay and then rafaza means to refuse and how this is refused so ra we know the hand and fa is separate you know uh, farak, uh, farak uh, there is a separation, right? So a physical separation between the hands and of this word to add, right? So separate from uh, uh, adding the hand is to refuse, right? So agree, radhiya and rafaza both have, uh, uh, you can easily understand uh, the meaning if you go with the single letter meaning. Huh? And then notice that uh, in English, uh, the Rafa and, and Zawad uh, has uh, similarity. Um, I think this is actually from uh, the Arabic word. Actually, actually, I, I, I have this theory that this uh, Arabic language is the divine language. I have tried to tell you that uh, this is the original language that was uh, taught to Adam uh, and then over the years, I mean, over the time period, people forget, and then whatever has remained uh, with us is the modern standard Arabic, right? But uh, actually, there are much, much more words uh, that were in the original uh, Arabic language, and this is what was taught to humans uh, uh, by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Uh, Bil Kalam, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said this in the Quran that He has taught humans with Kalam, with uh, the writing, the the script of the Arabic language. Okay, so. Uh, remember the reason uh, this uh, picture can be seen is that uh, actually everything, every object, concepts, everything that you see, can touch, feel, hear, or whatever, they are made according to the shape of these divine letters. And if you like these videos, uh, please uh, subscribe, leave a like, and make a comment and share. And for more information, please uh, check out my books, which are available from uh, Google Books. Recently, I, uh, one person has translated my uh, second book into a German uh, translation. Uh, please uh, take a look in these books, and uh, uh, if you like it, you can buy it from there. And inshallah, I'll be making more videos like this in the future. Until then, Allah Hafiz.